that just resonated in my heart as I heard the like, open spirituals that I don't hear too much. See, I grew up in a traditional Baptist church. In my church, we don't do as much of that. So when you start to tap your feet and you start to shake your head, you feel the spirit of the Lord coming amongst us. Sometimes you got to get up and just say, thank you, God. sermon today is what goes in is what comes out. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, this is the day that you've made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Dear Heavenly Father, right now, God, I ask you to allow Lord L to decrease and let you increase. Use me for your service. Let thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, this is my prayer. Let all the believers say, Amen. Amen. My main text of my sermon today will come from 1 Timothy 5.10. Easy English translation. It reads as follows. People should know that she has done good things. For example, she must have been a good mother to her children. She must have received visitors into her home. She must have helped God's people as their servant. She must have taken care of people who had problems. She must have continued to do all kinds of things for the good like that. Amen. The definition of you in use a function word to indicate Includes an illustration or position within limits. Mm -hmm. The definition of out in a direction away from the inside or center. The first thing that comes to mind when you hear the title of this sermon for some would probably say immediately I thought about health, eating, or how eating the wrong things can lead to break down of your body over time. Yes. Or even some that could hurt us more quickly like drinking accesses, amount of alcohol, prescription drugs, or recreational ones. Mm -hmm. Well, I say to you, these are great, great guesses, but in no way is this what I am referring to in this title. You see, the Lord gave me this title because he said to me, is my word not, listen to this, the very food that you put in your mouth to eat so you will not starve from lack of nourishment or die from lack of water because of thirst. When you think of more examples, I think of a baby crawling. When a baby starts crawling, they don't just try one time. The baby tries over and over again. In the repetition matter, when the baby finally gets the hang of crawling, then and only then will it lead to taking their first step. You better listen to this. Listen to this. At the very end of all these steps, then and only then, Will the baby start walking? But the baby, which is us, must start first by crawling. So in other words, my brothers and sisters, we can't skip any steps. There's a process. Somebody say there's a process. There's a process. When you think about skipping steps, you're thinking about trying to get ahead and cheat someone in the middle. If we look back and see what God has done over our lives, and what 
God sent his son to do, if you notice, where if God just wanted his son to die on the cross for our sins, why did he have to go through so many steps before he got there? I'm glad you asked that question. That's because he had to leave a trail for us to follow. If we never got the trail, then we wouldn't have any crumbs to pick up to follow his example. This is what the Holy Bible is for us today. In Matthew 5, 4, 6, do you only love people who love you? God will not give you good things just for doing that. Even a man who takes taxes loves their friends. Listen to that. Did you hear that? It said, even a man who takes taxes loves his friends. So in other words, my brothers and sisters, what does that cost us to love our family? What does that cost us to love our friends? Jesus. But when we show the love of God to people that we have no connection with, mm. this is yes. when we are showing the love of Christ the most. Yes. Somebody say servant. Servant. When we don't know what may be, what someone may be dealing with, some people could be dealing with some things like mental illness, suicide thoughts, homeless, drug addiction, alcoholism. This is when, as followers of Jesus Christ, we must make the most difference in life. That's what I was just talking about. Listen to this part right here. We must conduct ourselves in a way that people we come in contact with will see a difference in us. Amen. Did everybody hear that? Yes. Amen. That is so important. You know, nowadays, let's face it, we have a lot of people who are not traditional church anymore. That's right. And the first thing that comes out of your mouth is God, hallelujah, and you put in a Bible and it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. Come on. I'm 47. Come on. I'm just telling you what the Lord told me to tell you. It's not going to work. I'm not saying that we don't stay... Stay to what we believe in God. But let's build a relationship. Yes. Let's build a relationship first. We can't start off throwing the word at an unbeliever. Or we can't start throwing the word to someone who's been hurt by the church. I know y'all know some people that have been hurt by the church. It may not have happened in Rising Sun or HCM, but it's happening out there. Mm -hmm. That's what they say anyway. We got to get ourselves out of the way. The difference is that we are children of the most high God that people should know without us even saying a word about our Heavenly Father. They should know by our acts and our deeds that something is different in us. Yes. Amen. How can we show this difference? There are so many ways we can show this difference. So many ways. There are ways just calling up someone and saying, hey, how are you doing? I was thinking about you. Do you need anything? If we see somebody walking down the street, they may be struggling with their bags. If we're younger and we're more able to help, maybe we can say, can I carry that for you to your car? It doesn't take a lot, people. It doesn't take a lot. We make it seem like it's more than it is. This is the time for us as believers in Christ to put our beliefs and faith to the ultimate test. By doing what Christ has commanded us, we must be doers as well of, as hearers of his word. In other words, my brothers and sisters, we must put in the work every in our everyday life to show that we care. How can we show this easily? Then you think we can just do a few things. And here's a few things that we can do. Feeding the hungry. Volunteering at a shelter, feeding the hungry, personally fixing a meal, packing up a few groceries for someone while you're shopping for yourself that may be less unfortunate and don't have the money. Two, helping the homeless, donating items to a shelter to keep people warm, offer a hand for a person just to put a few dollars in their pocket, give them a side job, something to just boost up their morale. Find out where there's, if there's a way you can 
help them with anything or even not just on a day of service. Caring for the sick. Visiting the sick and shedding and making sure they know someone cares going by their homes, seeking to see if they need any assistance while they are recovering from an illness or an injury. Supporting the elderly. Lending a supporting hand to our elders, neighbors, or friends. Offering to take them to the grocery store, doctor's appointments, helping them do chores around the house they may not be able to do any more themselves. Educating the uneducated. Finding a polite way to show someone that they, what, they're, what they're thinking or including them in some new concept to impact their lives in a positive way. Counseling in your community or church. Helping out the community by educating, offering strategies that will help improve people's everyday life. Number seven, making yourself available to help someone in some way. Amen. Making sure that you are always letting people know whether it's in church or on your job or just in your community that you are available to lend a helping hand to anyone. Mm -hmm. Number eight, spending quality time just listening to someone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some people just need someone to listen. Mm -hmm. right. They don't need advice, they just want someone to listen who they respect. Yeah. Be available by, com by com confident, confiding, by allowing yourself to be open, to be used and used as a soundboard for some people who don't know that they need someone to talk to. The problem that they may have, may be having or be having and just need someone to listen for a little while. Yes. Mm -hmm. Number nine, introducing people to God by showing love and a giving heart while allowing yourself to be available to someone, to help someone in a multitude of areas, you will build relationships, there it is, build relationships that will allow you to introduce people to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in a way that they can accept from, since they are unbelievers. Mm -hmm. Last, and number 10, Supporting and giving guidance to the youth. I will say that again. Supporting and giving guidance to the youth. Amen. What I've learned over my 47 years of existence is it seems like us church folk forget where we come from. Again, I would say we forget where we have come from. In other words, we forgot how it was to be a young person. We forgot when you were struggling between good and bad. We forgot when we tried to struggle between doing what we want to do and what God would have us to do. Come on, y'all. We got to understand that we can't forget that. Yeah. See, the Bible tells us that we should be able to come back down to someone else's level and be unscathed yeah. and show them the love of Christ to help pull them up. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you can still be there to give them guidance in what they are trying to do for the good of God or the good of mankind. This is the way that we as adults can bridge the gap and show that we are supportive, listen to this, supporters, supportive in everything that they may do that will glorify God, even if we don't like the way they're glorifying God. Let me give you an example of that. You got a lot of Christian rap now. I'm only 47, I didn't think I was that old. But a lot of this rap out here, I just cannot seem to give with. But if it, gets them to come into the house of the Lord and they are giving praise. The Bible tells us make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It didn't say that their noise had to be the same noise that I do. See, I'm 47. They're 20. They're 15. Come on, y'all. 
<laughs> when I think of World AIDS Day, I immediately think of a day of remembrance for those suffering and living with the virus that are less unfortunate than we are. I think of immediately a day of service. I ask the question, is this not what we should be doing in our everyday lives, service? We often do these things on special days or holidays like World AIDS Day, Thanksgiving, or Christmas. If you really take a minute to look at what we are talking about and what God would have us to do, it falls right in line with your pastor's theme of the year. 1 Kings 8.61 NIV And may your heart be filled, committed to the Lord our God, to live by his decree and obey his commandments as it is this time. If I look at the scripture in English, the English Bible, it breaks it down just a little more. And it says as follows, but people really must want to be servants of the Lord. There's that servant again. Our God, you must do what he orders you to do. Hear that? Yes. And you must obey his words as you do now. Yes. There is, there is that word again, servants. What is a servant? A servant, one that serves others. Two, one that performs duties about the person or home of a master. We as followers of Christ Jesus should concentrate on the definition that says one that serves others. After all, is that not what God did when he sent his son down to teach us about his love for his heavenly father? Correct. Correct. Jesus loved his father so much that he obeyed him even as if even as his burden was becoming to hard. Yeah. He could he asked God to remove this away from him, but yet he still obeyed his father and paid the ultimate sacrifice, not for him, but for his love of his father. Yes. Oh, I wish somebody could hear me today. Yes. That's true. God would the love of the Father God which was to die on the cross for all of our sins, this is what Jesus had to endure. Mm -hmm. We have the tools for successful implementation of these instructions from our Lord in our lives on a consistent basis. Yes. My brothers and sisters, we no longer have the excuse to go out the door once you have acknowledged that Christ is the head of your life, and now you will serve him until you die. Mm -hmm. After you make this decree, your will has been deadened, and now it is about the Father who art in heaven. Amen. Amen. Yes. <clears throat> Amen. John 5, 4. Continue to live in me, and I will continue to live in you. A branch cannot make fruit by itself. Mm -hmm. It can make fruit only if it continues to be part of the vine. Yes. You are like that. You cannot make fruit unless you continue to live in me. Mm -hmm. so, so, so what is that saying, someone may ask? Come on. To continue to live in him, God, by spending time studying praying, and yes, even just talking to God, this is how we stay connected to our Heavenly Father. Right. If we don't do these things, then we will become unconnected with God. Remember, God's holy word to us is like the water that we need to drink so we won't die yes. from thirst, or the food that we need to consume so we won't die from starvation. Mm -hmm. So in other words, my brothers and sisters, if we do not do these things, if we do not study, if we do not pray, if we do not talk to God, when the devil comes amongst us, how will we be able to fight? Because the connection is lost. 
I'll give you another example. Can a plug not in the socket connect? Right. You can't get no electricity. Yeah, that's right. So unless you put that plug in the socket, the, 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 the currency was not working. We can't hear the right direction which to go in if we don't spend time with the Heavenly Father. This is when the Holy Spirit that dwells in all of us is directing our path. Mark, 5, Mark 12, 30. You should love the Lord, your God, completely. Love him with all your mind. Love him with all that you are. Love him in all you think and all you do. Yes. Be consistent in showing your unwavering love for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We must not just settle for doing some things, but we must be diligent in trying to do all things. Amen. Amen. I will leave you with this, my brothers and sisters. Let us remember that God sent his son to pay the ultimate sacrifice with his love, showing it for his father God. If we are true believers, we must look no further than this for an example. Listen to this. If you don't remember anything else, remember this. We should be willing to make a sacrifice to show that we love God by becoming a better servant for Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. The Bible tells us that it, the Bible tells us that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May the Lord add a blessing and a reading to his holy word. Thank you all. Amen. Amen.